Three days in the Cayman Islands for Utah State. It's felt like right down the fairway. Great Osibor and the Aggies into the title game tonight here at the Cayman Islands Classic, where AJ Kajust and Stephen F. Austin waiting in the wings with Press U. It's the Aggies and Lumberjacks for some hardware. And it's coming up next here on Flow Hoops. And a beautiful shot of the Caribbean Sea as we welcome you into the title game of the Cayman Islands Classic Basketball Tournament. This is our 12th game in three days, our fourth one to wrap up this third and final day. Utah State out of the Mountain West, Stephen F. Austin out of the whack alongside Jess Settles, Matt Martucci, and these, these two teams, Jess, deserving to be here. They've been the class of the tournament. Stephen F. Austin, their pressure. Utah State, they pounded inside. Both teams have played extremely physical in this tournament. We knew that Stephen F. Austin would bring the hammer. But Utah, Utah State's been a pleasant surprise. They had a really tough and physical practice before they made the trip. Coach Sprinkle challenged his guys. They've risen to the occasion. The two toughest teams will play for the hardware. And they knew if they were going to be right this week, they needed A.J. Kajust to step up. Their veteran point guard responded. And no doubt about it. If you have not seen number eight play, you're in for a real treat. He had 23 second half points against LMU. He gets to the rim. He guards the defense. He just wreaks havoc all over the court. A very special player, high IQ. He wants to lead his team to a championship. What a brilliant and spectacular tournament he's had so far. And meanwhile, for Utah State, this week hasn't been good. It's been great as an Osibor. Well, he's been perfect. 21 points and 14 rebounds a game. His power game is unmatched. But the way he moves his speed at both ends, he's guarding ball screens. He's hedging. For crying out loud, sometimes he brings the ball up the court. court. He's blocking shots. And if he gets it close to the rim, it is lights out. Stephen F. Austin's going to have to throw four or five guys at number one. He's a superstar, and he's a handful. And we'll see if Stephen F. Austin's up to the challenge tonight. Starting lineup this evening for the Lumberjacks. Played by the point guard, Kajust. Jaleel Bobrin at six feet nine could step out and knock out a three. And of course, Latrell just fell. Head coach Kyle Keller calls him the best shooter that he's ever seen. It's a team built on a lot of JUCO transfers and player development. And over to Utah State. Completely revamped roster under first year head coach Danny Sprinkle. Great Osibor and Darius Brown both played for him at Montana State. Mason Falls left. He talks about as, as much potential as anybody on the defensive side. Josh Adujang is another transfer from Coastal Carolina. Utah State the white. Stephen F. Austin the purple. Tap up and won by Bowburn against Isaac Johnson. And let's crown a champion tonight here from the Cayman Islands. Matt Heyman at the controls. And now Latrell Giselle. Man-to-man -man for Utah State. Good curl, but the recovery from Aduje punched it off the glass. Aggies trying to set up Johnson. Tough catch in traffic off the window. Aggies on the board first. Similar to how last night started, I believe it was Johnson getting the bucket for them to open things up in the semis. There's Kyle Keller. What's his eighth season on the bench for the 55-year-old? Trying to get back to the tournament for what would be the second time during his tenure. And I can tell you, Jess Settles, from what we've seen in the two days, they're good enough to do it. Kajus from Hall. Tough shot. Don't think he meant to bank that, but that's where it looked like it was going. And handed the cookie jar here for Day Day Hall. And 
And rapid fire substitutions, 11 man rotation as Kajust gets the seat on the sideline. We've said it the last two days, almost like line changes for Kyle Keller. Penetrate and pitch. Johnson with a look from the corner. And South went down with a rebound for the Jacks. On the kick out. Justell missed it. And at the other end, Falzlev pounding it down. That's, that's a freshman hammer. And a good start for Danny Sprinkle and the Aggies. Year number one in Logan for Sprinkle, who took over a program that was vacated by Ryan Odom, who took the VCU job. After a tournament appearance, pretty much everybody gone a year ago. But can already tell you for a team that was picked ninth in the Mountain West, they have not looked like it over these last two days. Yeah, no doubt about it. They've shared the ball. Looks like they've been playing together for quite a while. Now he said the keys of this game, number one, you have to take care of the ball always against Stephen F. Austin. And if you can turn that defense to offense, get those easy baskets, that's what it's all about. But you can't get punked, he said. Maybe the quote of the week, you cannot let the physicality of the Lumberjacks get in your head. He said, number two, we got to play off two feet. When you go into the paint with those drives, you got to come to jump stops, be willing to take the hit or kick the ball out. And he said, been very proud of the fight and physicality of this team. We weren't sure coming in if we were tough enough. So I know now that we are. Our guys have done a great job of being physical and moving on to the next play. And what a start for Utah State, the championship game. And no surprise that they're up 4 nothing. Bovren backing down, a little up and under in on Osibor. And thought that was halfway down. It popped out. Southwick got the rebound. Shot clock back inside 20. Southwick going to put it on the deck, right to the basket. Bobrin there with the follow. And at the other end, Osibor streaking down the floor. Utah State back up by four. Over the shoulder to Southwick, missed the three. On the bounce, Sostaborn looking to push. Johnson, extra pass, falls left, one more, Brown. And Johnson's golf touch on the turnaround. Four now for Isaac Johnson. Three different Aggies have scored. Bobrin handed the cookie jar for Falls Lev and a foul on Utah State. Oh, if you like above the rim action, you're going to enjoy this start. Bobrin has been all over the court. It's just so easy for him. He plays hard, but look, you can't celebrate. What a brilliant pass by Darius Brown. That's 15 assists to one turnover. On the tournament so far, you can just see the court vision he has. There's Coach Keller. He told us, look, we got to handle Osibor. We're not going to be able to stop him. We got to handle him. We're going to throw a lot of different bodies at him. We have to rebound. We have to limit our turnovers if we want to bring home the title. Heyman missed on the designed inbounds. And out of bounds, last touch by Utah State. We'll stay at this end. Just had a look at Krishan Christmas, who's celebrating a birthday today for Stephen F. Austin. Would like to bring home some title hardware. I'm sure they'll have a cake afterwards if they haven't already. Southwick and Happy Feet shuffled that pivot foot and first Stephen F. Austin turnover. Yeah, it's been interesting. Southwick's had a heck of a tournament so far. His fingerprints have been all over these games, but you talked about the line changes. What makes the Lumberjacks tough is not only are they deep, everybody on their team could come in and score. Ballslav comes out of the pack. Yeah, that was impressive yesterday. 
Speaking of impressive, Aduje. Utah State out of the gate, up by eight. The screen from Frank Stane, and Otley goes to Yako the roll. Now Nana set the screen and got the bucket. Good ball movement for the Aggies. The Duje airballed the three. Who's this pace favor, Jess? Feels like Utah State early on. The thing about Utah State, Matt, is they can play fast and slow. Now, Stephen F. Lawson has a lot of bodies to run out of, so I would say it's probably a wash at this point. Hotley Bosiaco cuts this to four with the steal on the block. Stephen F. Austin fortunate to only be down four. They've opened up three of 11. And foul on Frank Stain. Back and forth here in Georgetown, Grand Cayman. Three point, make it four point lead for Utah State on flow hoops. Now that's not a bad piece of hardware to put in your basketball office or your trophy case. 10-6, Utah State on top of Stephen F. Austin here in the Cayman Islands Classic title game. Yes, settles. Matt Bartucci. Look at these Aggies. Who have been impressive. A blowout win over Marshall. And then won by a possession late last night over Akron. Thanks to a late turnover from the Zips. 13 different newcomers. No points coming back. Now, for most teams, that would be a problem. But Danny Sprinkle brought great Osibor and Darius Brown over from an NCAA tournament team at Montana State. Now, Ian Martinez came over from Maryland. He's battle tested. Now, they're averaging 45 points in the paint so far in this tournament. And it's not only great Osibor. These guys have been aggressive. They've attacked it. And they're not afraid to get to the rim and before face the contact. They give it back here. That's Martinez pictured. Stephen F. Austin with Kamari Wilson at the controls. Out there with Krishan Christmas, Frank Stain, Clayton Southwick, and Nana Antwi Bosiaco. Wilson trying to initiate, looking for Antwi Bosiaco. And a foul on Khalifa Sacco. Well, I thought LMU had Stephen F. Austin on the ropes in that opening round. And Kamari Wilson came up with that huge steal at half court, stole the momentum back, went down and scored. And if you're a young player, look, sometimes it just takes one effort play to turn the tide. And keep your eye on number four today. He's got the pink shoes. He just took the jumper, but he made the play that got them to this championship game. You can make that argument. He played hard and made a spectacular play. Kyle Keller told us they don't talk about shot selection. Wilson not necessarily their biggest source of offense. But most of these guys do have a green light. No memory, no conscience type of thing. Stocko got a hand in. Utah State able to turn over Stephen F. Austin. Southwick almost was able to grab it right back. But we'll stay at this end. Well, Stephen F. Austin forces close to 22 turnovers a game. That's top 10 in the NCAA, and they've been in that category for the last three years. So the one thing you cannot do if you're the Aggies is help them out. And there have been a couple of foolish passes in the last few possessions. If the Lumberjacks are going to take it away from you, make them earn it. But you can't throw these soft passes against them or it's going to be a long night. I say again, Jess, fortunate that this is only a four-point game as Ostabor turns. If you look at the shooting numbers, Lumberjacks have opened up 25%. Utah State's at 71. Yeah, he puts so much pressure on your defense. And Southwick, you know, that's an obvious call. 
The good thing is Coach Keller has a lot of bodies he can throw out there. And we mentioned that they're all capable players. Check this out. If you're a Stephen F. Austin fan, eight Lumberjacks scored six or more points versus Drake, and six Lumberjacks scored nine or more points versus LMU. So they are capable. They can afford a little foul trouble. They've got guys coming in who can fill it up and play with a ton of toughness. Let's see if they can get number eight going right here. He's been the star of this tournament, the best player on the floor a lot of minutes here at the Cayman Islands Classic. Had Bartolo, we've seen this before. Looked identical to the two or three others that he's had this tournament. Thefts right at midcourt, and the result has been a two-hand dunk every time. Day Day Hall, other end. On the turnaround. Martinez penetrating pitch, Agbon Polo. Boy, Day Day Hall is fearless, isn't he? Uh, he takes these matchups personally, and he just goes right up against great. And makes him look small. Yeah, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, plays like he's about 6'10". Jelani Stone able to grab that one. And here he is on the interior. Logbuck Polo. I mean, just look at this bounce right here. Wow. He makes that look easy. And these are the easy buckets that both teams are trying to come up with. Nobody wants to get to a championship game and lose it. This is an important game, and I've mentioned it this week a few times. Kansas State won an incredibly close battle against LSU in last year's titles game, and it totally transformed the season for Kansas State. They went on to greatness, and they look back, and they'll tell you, it was right here on this floor where they gained belief that they could beat anybody. Brown got the steal. And they almost were able to convert that anyway, even though it was broken on the lob to Agbon Polo. Devon Jackson, the one who missed the layup. Hall, shoulders in, missed the floater. Jelani Stone clears everybody out. And Hall couldn't corral the rebound. Brown snaps it. Osteborg, one more. Martinez thought about it. Another entry. Contact offensive foul. Javon Jackson out of control. Danny Sprinkle with the option to go 10, 11 deep. Jackson is part of that rotation. Talked about this week as one where guys needed to separate and step in and say, hey, this is my spot. But also said that 10-man rotation you're probably going to see until conference play. Yeah, that's an interesting decision they have to make. I mean, it's all about this championship right now, but he might be wavering in that thought after these couple games. I mean, all these guys are playing hard and contributing. He might be able to go just a little bit deeper than he thought, especially with the grind of conference play. The, the more guys who can get out there and fill it up, the better. Another great pass. Oh, yeah, missed the three at one end. Carson Templin getting valuable minutes. The freshman from Longview, Texas is on the board. Up and under, Hall says, I'll see you and raise you with an and one. Now keep your eye on Dave Day Hall. I mean, he has just got all the moves. But if you're Utah State, hey, look, it's really tough to score against the Lumberjacks in the half court. So just run the court, and one of the best assist guys in the country will find you. What a run out. Just look at the footwork. He takes him under. Pump fake, slide through, and one. We got a good one here. The Cayman Islands Classic. Stephen F. Austin down by five here at the Cayman Islands Classic title game. Lumberjacks picked behind Grand Canyon and head coach Bryce Drew in the WAC preseason poll. Known for both their offensive and defensive efficiency. And 
No surprise that they are the winningest program by percentage in the state of Texas in the last two decades. And we've seen two games worth of evidence, Just Settles. Oh, they beat a great Drake team. Drake dominated Akron this morning. And I mean, this is just a coach and a program and a fan base that's used to winning championships. And their players know when they come there what the expectations are. They typically win games like this over the last 10 years, whether regular season or conference championship, they've won nine titles. I mean, that's just unbelievable. 85 and 31 over the last four years. That's 32nd best in the country. And they are not afraid to go on the road. Their defense travels 31 and 15, sixth best in the NCAA over the last four years. If you're going to beat SFA, you're going to have to play a solid 38 or 39 minutes. Not, not easy to play 40 minutes, because you're going to have to be almost perfect for most of the night. Day-Day Hall completes the three-point play from before the timeout, four-point game. Hasebor now bodied by Bobrin. And good help D from Heyman, but Hasebor got it up on the board and cleaned it up the glass. Martinez. Two-time transfer, just eligible a little bit before this tournament started. Giselle spins off the three. And Darius Brown down with the rebound. Nice find, Asabor. And a foul on Jaleel Bobrin and Stephen F. Austin. Look about the athletes that Utah State has and the experience. Look, you just got to keep coming to the rim. That's just a, a bouncy putback, but Asabor draws so much traffic. He'll draw double and triple teams, and your defense gets out of position for rebounding. So if you're the Aggies, you're sending three or four to the rim at all times, sending the point guard back, but there are rebound opportunities, and that's just something that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Those big guys, like Osibor, draw a crowd and get your defense discombobulated for second chance point. One of two for Osibor. Second largest lead of the night for Utah State, who's been up as many as eight. Even if Austin yet to lead tonight. Heyman, shot clock cut inside 15. Giselle knifing and scores. Back down to two possessions. Thanks to Stephen F. Austin's junior and the transfer from Kansas. I think Bill Self did Kyle Keller a favor with that one. We've seen That's Giselle the last couple days special. Heyman comes up with the steal. Deep into the defense and not a great decision. Well, yeah, he comes in, there's nothing there. Lands on two feet, but I don't know if he saw the official running down. I thought that was his teammate, but that, uh, that didn't end well. Six, Stephen F. Austin turnover. Extra pass, Templin punches it down on top of Christmas. Happy Thanksgiving to Carson Templin. Four now off the bench for him. And back-to-back -back turnovers. What about the passing for the Aggies? I mean, you turn the ball over, and you're going to pay the price. And this point guard, and that's what you call the old hockey assist. Give credit to Darius Brown. He started it. Martinez with the slip and the two fists are along the baseline. Falls left, spin dribble. Templin already big off the bench. What a find, sealing is Asabor. Nine point Utah State lead, timeout Stephen F. Austin. Well, 
already 16 points in the paint. They're averaging 45 in this tournament. These are what you call high percentage shots. And look, you have to do your work before he seals you. You're going to have to fight around in the front. If you're that late to the party, these guys are just going to live above the rim. The extra pass, the high basketball IQ, turnovers pretty costly right now for the Lumberjacks. Yeah, no doubt about it. Six points off the seven turnovers. And not only that, even if Austin held to under 32% here, Aggies doubling them up by percentage. They're at almost 67. And it's not just Osibor like it was uh, a lot of the other night against Akron. One, two, three, four, five, six players in Danny Sprinkle's rotation have scored tonight. And it's just been a little bit too easy. A lot of plays at the rim. Coach Keller's teams usually offer more resistance. Let's keep our eye on the defense of the Lumberjacks over the next couple minutes. They cannot afford to give up any more dunks or runouts. Hall just fell with the flash. Right into a double team. Shot clock inside 10. Kajuth. Christmas, great pass. And that's a goal 10. Basket to Hall. Yeah, Christmas, one of the toughest guys on the floor. Great pass. Once that ball hits the backboard, if it has a chance to go in, you can't touch it. Pretty easy call. Somebody needs to tell that young man it's his birthday. That means somebody <laughs> throws the ball to you under the basket. For Sean Christmas exactly. doesn't care, though. Kyle Keller actually told us about him. He doesn't even realize how good he could be. And once the light actually comes on, there's three-letter league potential, he believes. Called him a hard rocket cat. I actually asked Kyle Keller. Often uses the word cats to describe his guys. I said, are you were you a Sammy Davis Jr. fan? He said, nah. I said, I'm not that old. <laughs> A little too young for the Rat Pack. Perry here on Utah State. Seventh Aggies turnover. But impressive once again are the Aggies, just like they've been the last two nights. Even at Boston, though, yesterday we watched them take a very good Drake team pick to win the Valley, basically to the woodshed. One and done. Decent amount of those for the Lumberjacks. Osibor filling, missed it. And there's Kempwood. His third game worth of action. And first one here in the Cayman Islands Classic, six for Carson Templin. Otwe Bosiaco missed. Try for his own rebound, out of bounds, last touch, Templin. Wow, Templin, what a story. I mean, I'm looking at my stat sheets from the last couple games, trying to find some information on this guy. And he comes in, has been a major, major factor in this game, living around the rim, cleaning up messes. Another high percentage shot. Look at number 24 go to work. Feel so happy for the way he's played. I mean, he just, look, the Lumberjacks don't often get out top. This first part of the first half, they have been. Well, if you're enjoying the Cayman Islands Classic, be sure to check out flowhoops.com for exclusive content and post-game interviews with players and coaches. Join the conversation at Flow Hoops on all your social media platforms. College Hoops tips off here. And you get steel drums. And pretty high-level basketball. Nine-point Utah State lead, Danny Sprinkle and the Aggies. 
11 of their first 17. They've spread the scoring around, six points apiece. I would have expected that from Great Ostabor, but not necessarily Carson Templin, who played in their opener uh, against South Dakota Mines and then came back and played uh, some in the Southern Utah game, but first action of the tournament here in the Cayman Islands. The sell on the curl for Stephen F. Austin missed the layup. Nice find off the pick and roll, up in the air, Johnson. Six now for Isaac Johnson. Three different players for Utah State with half a dozen. Kajus trying to get him going, first bucket. Or the veteran point guard. Balls left. A DJ way up on the board. That hit the support. Apparently, last touch, though, by Stephen F. Austin. Well, Groundhog Day for Utah State. Just more points in the paint. More dunks, more layups, and more unchallenged shots. And this is unlike a Stephen F. Austin team to give up that many high percentage looks. They're going to have to shore it up at this end. Almost feels like the LMU game a little bit where it starts to get away from you, but they got back in it because of their defense. Uh, they forced there Brown into a bad three. Yep. We trailed Justel along with Southwick. Otwe Bosianco, Christmas, and Wilson. This is Southwick blocked away by Johnson. Falls left. Knifing in, lost the basketball. A DJ able to rescue. Falls left, step through, bucket, and the line. Well, Isaac Johnson is the perfect complement to Osibor. Just goes straight up and. Balls left. He's an impressive story as well. Returning redshirt freshman. Nobody else came back to play for the Aggies, but eight for 13 coming into this game in the tournament. He's been outstanding and he's been very active defensively. Five steals so far. His hands are constantly moving, and I think he's been a pleasant surprise for Coach Sprinkle. Had a great tournament so far. Yeah, they interviewed him post game last night and he said uh, in a self critique, the only thing I need to do is just slow down a little bit. Let the game come to me. Looks pretty good though. 11 point Utah State lead, it's their largest. Bobrin hesitant to take the three over Osterborn. Giselle runs into a wall. Bobrin leaking and fouled from behind by Johnson. Leo Bobrin, who was the driving force behind that blowout of Drake. One of them, anyway. With 14 points in 20 minutes yesterday. Only the second free throw attempt for Stephen F. Austin. It was only a five point deficit against Drake. Loyola well, Marymount, where it just was, 11 points. So not like the Lumberjacks haven't been here before in this very tournament. Inside of six minutes. Falls land, great drop off. Templin couldn't finish. That was a bunny. I like his game. Danny Sprinkle might have like 12 guys, Jess Tettles. 
Yeah, exactly. And back to what he talked to us about. I mean, he might have to reevaluate. I, I like the depth his team has. I like fresh bodies coming in. And well, this kid has given them such a lift. He almost went four for four right there. Even up Austin's defense, a real a real problem right now. They're just vacillating in their commitment to defense in this first half. It's surprising to say that, but we just haven't seen this. There's so many shots at the rim for Utah State. And that actually got touched last by the Aggies after Southwick goes one for two. Well, I mean, one thing that is encouraging for the Lumberjacks, you're already in the bonus with about five and a half minutes left here in the first half. So maybe you get back in the game that way. But we get a foul away from the basketball. It's on Latrell Giselle trying to get free. Well, seventh team fell on the Lumberjacks, which means everything from here on out now for Utah State is free throws. Balls land. Templin. I don't know, the headband? Longer guy? Chris Anderson? Birdman? Just tell from deep. Yeah, maybe a reach. Maybe a reach there, Matt. It's yeah, been a long probably. day. <laughs> <laughs> I just I like the way the young man plays around the rim. Absolutely. And, you know, we talked about it after the first day. Uh, I think the Aggies fans are going to fall in love with this team. So many big personalities, none bigger than great. Ossipor, he's the vocal leader. You got all these guys coming in who can play above the rim and play with passion and excitement. They're going to continue to get tougher. This would be a an absolutely massive championship for this team. 13 newcomers, zero returning points or minutes from last year's squad. Bobrin, long of the triple. Out of bounds, last touch by Utah State. Balls left, and Temple trying to make the pace. Let's, let's take a look. Well, this is not reviewable. It looks like 12 forced it out there, doesn't it? Yeah, I think Falls left hands on it last. But, I mean, you played this game at this level. The longer you try and sell it, maybe they believe you. <laughs> right. Colburn drops it off to Southwick. Mm. Down to four minutes here in the opening half. A great Osibor. That's the mismatch of the tournament right now. They got to get it inside to him. Instead, Agbapolo settles. And what do you know? Four point game after a couple of free throws from Otwe Bosianco. Brown jumps out of it. Camplin cross court. Agbapolo had tried to throw it through Stain, got caught on his hip. Another turnover. Ninth one for the Aggies. Otwe Bosianco. Going to work, offensive foul. Yeah, just no need to lower the shoulder right there, right? You got the mouse in the house, the smaller guy on you. that gets a little shove in the back. And look at Brown, he's going to sell it. You just have to go straight up right over the top. Good acting job, but that's what you do. If somebody's going to lower their shoulder, you help the official out. Unfortunate, 22 is going to have to go sit. Yeah, and it had been so effective, the most effective Lumberjack tonight. Eight points and only 10 minutes of action here in the first half. Martinez guarded by Stain. Southwick on the switch. Good help deep for Stephen F. Austin.
Osibor, dangerous. Brown had to act like a wide receiver there. Five to shoot. Martinez. And somehow got that to go. Stephen F. Austin crowd wanted to walk. Good time for only the second bucket of the half for Ian Martinez. All one on one, one at Osibor. Instead, steps out, has hit a couple of those this tournament, but that's not really his game. Yeah, I was going to say, that's just not the shot they wanted. No need to force that one. They've been able to get inside, get deep in the paint. Well, this game's getting tight. Hey, look, if you're Coach Peller, you can live with this shot right here. This is great defense. Got away with the travel, handed his face. Big time. One second on the shot clock, right? That's... Great shot, but that's pretty darn good defense. Oh, Lumberjacks fans do not like the call. They're working that official over. And Kyle Keller told us their fans travel, mm. including the Kyle Keller Fatheads, all the way from Nagadocha. See, you missed out on that era. I mean, if great defense, got away with the travel, handed his face, Big time. one second on the shot clock, right? That's great shot, but that's pretty darn good defense. Oh, Lumberjacks fans do not like the call. They're working that official over. And Kyle Keller told us their fans travel. Mm. including the Kyle Keller Fatheads, all the way from Nagadocha. See, you missed out on that era. I mean, if you were at Carver Hawkeye now as a player, they'd have all kinds of Jess Settles cardboard cutouts. <laughs> Look, I, I'm glad I missed... connect with you. I, I'm so glad I missed the social media era. I can't imagine being able to be contacted by fans, but I will admit that I regret missing the NIL era, Matt. <laughs> yeah, so do your pockets and your bank account. <laughs> I was thinking maybe a, a John Deere tractor for the folks, you know, in my sophomore year or something like that. That was Ricky Rowe, right? Blue chips? Ricky Rowe. Dad, Dad got the tractor. Hey, I got it. I uh, can't argue with that view of Georgetown Grant Cayman. As we get ready to start the second half, Utah State by six on top of Stephen F. Austin in our 2023 Cayman Islands Classic title game. All kinds of Aggie defense just settles here in the first half. Well, they forced nine Lumberjack turnovers and that led to 11 points off turnovers. And they've been swarming around the basketball 
And you know what they do with it at the offensive end when they get that they pound it inside. Just look at them jumping the passing lane, coming up with high percentage looks. 24 points in the paint. They're well on their way to their average in this tournament of 45 points in the paint. They let Stephen F. Austin off the hook. Two for seven from the free throw line. But what about Carson Templin? The way he stepped up in this game has been a major, major storyline. And if you're Stephen F. Austin, you're only one of eight from beyond the arc. They hit 14 threes against Drake. And we saw magic the other day out of A.J. Kajust. He had two points in the first half against LMU, but he ended up with 25 points in the game, a whopping 23 big ones in the second half. I think A.J.'s got to take over this game if FSA wants to take home the championship. But first half along Utah State. Well, the start. Clean it up, the offensive glass. Johnson, and got it picked away. First possession of the second half is a turnover for the Aggies. Heyman, he was yet to score tonight. Hall, in on the much bigger Osibor, the turnaround over the front of the rim. That's what Day Day Hall does. Well, you can just tell he lives at the gym in the offseason. His footwork is impeccable. Other end, Brown getting involved. Scoring plus one. Yeah, Brown have been, a, been the table setter, the facilitator. But he gets downhill. He can get to the rim. He's going to have a spectacular year. Well, I mean, what did Danny Sprinkle tell us during our conversation? I have to tell him to shoot more. He's yeah. literally that unselfish. Back up to a seven-point Stephen F. Austin lead. And apparently Mason Falls left grabbing the shirt. Foul on the redshirt freshman. Danny Sprinkle's voice saying, Shooter Mason. And they knew designed inbounds coming to just sell. Got to the basket and threw it right to the arms of Osibor. Brown filling the lanes. And Paul's lamp off the board. Well, that's one of the Back prettiest passes you'll ever cushion. see. Paul's love running as hard as he could, but that did not look open from the angle I have. And he just threw him open right there on the break. Beautiful transition bucket. Paul got it blocked at this end. Johnson, nowhere to go. Good double, but Brown slipped it. And Falls left, soft touch. I think he has potential to be really special, Jess. Very locked in, both ends of the floor. Timeout for Stephen of Austin. Yeah, look. Balls of, I agree. Look at him run the floor. Is he open right here? I cannot believe that look. That is big time. A little Stockton to Malone on the fast break. You're right. Number 12. He has come out of nowhere and made a huge impact on this game. Stephen F. Austin trailing by 11 on what's been a trip of a lifetime for all these eight teams. There's a look at the Lumberjacks out at Stingray City, which is a 25 minute boat ride from Georgetown Grand Cayman. And there's Jess Settles with his family and a big old Stingray. What do we say his wingspan was, about eight feet? Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate, right? It's a, it takes a little courage to grab one of those and pick it up. And 
Well, the trip of a lifetime, and I think everybody sitting behind the Stephen F. Austin bench and the Utah State bench would say the same thing. There's so many families here. They've had a wonderful time. The bluest water you will ever swim in, the perfect temperature, and there is nothing better, and I mean nothing, for a basketball family and a traveling party to come to one of these tournaments and make it to the championship game. It just makes the whole week special. Yeah, it's certainly a trip you'll never forget. Stephen F. Austin's had plenty of fans that have come to see it. Well traveled for the Lumberjacks. Utah State, pretty good contingent as well. Largest crowd in terms of uh, the last three days on hand for the championship. A lot of local folks from the Cayman Islands watching Great Osibor seal off his man and score. Eight now for Osibor. Giselle spins off the three. I don't know, Jess, three minutes into the second half. Lumberjacks don't quite look like themselves. Falls left, streaking, and got the reverse layup. Yeah, I totally agree. I just never have seen this team give up this many layups and dunks. And it's not just Osibor, it's everybody on their team coming to the glass. They need a three-pointer to fall. Bosiaco right on cue, though. Eleven for Nana Akwebostiako. That's only their second mate three of the night. We'll see if it jump starts them a little bit. Well, not when you're giving that up to Ostabor. The big fella in double figures with ten. The juice tried to spin it up there. Falls left down with the rebound. Tough high low, and Giselle ran out of real estate trying to steal that on the baseline. And a little bit shaken up, went there into the those seats. Well, Grant Os or, or great Osabor has been there all tournament for Utah State. 14 point lead, thanks to the Brit. Second largest lead of the night for the Utah State Aggies here in the Cayman Islands Classic title game. And balance over these last three days for Danny Sprinkles, guys. Darius Brown. Great Osibor doing it with some D. And then running the floor with the freshman Falls Lev. Just so impressed all week. Jet settles with Great Osibor's footwork. Well, they've already got 36 points in the paint, and that's what he does. He puts so much pressure on your defense. They get Brown on the designed inbounds, and that ball just lead balloons. Darius Brown was the inbounder on that play. Ended up on the wing, drilled the three. Delani Stone off the bench gets a quick answer with a two for the Cal Baptist transfer. You keep wondering for Stephen F. Austin, when's the run going to come? Johnson outfought for that miss by Stone. Stain. And the answer may be it might not be coming. But we've seen this out of bounds play by several teams this week, and it's just very simple. The point guard takes it out, and they give it right back to him. Great screen by number 20. That's a play that everybody needs to have. Extremely simple, but that kid is a great shooter. 
There's still plenty of time, 15 minutes to go. A lot of time, but Stephen F. Austin is going to have to find a way to knock in some open three-point shots. They've been hitting them this week, and they've got to get stops. I mean, 36 points in the paint for Utah State. And there's another turnover. Here's going to be 38 points in the paint. And intentional foul on Clayton Stoutwick as Paul's left took a shot and actually opened up that area under the eye. Well, he's just been all over the court. I mean, what a tournament he's had. He's coming right into your living room. Was it a legitimate play on the ball? And the official said, no, it was not. And I think Mason Falslev has a cut. Looked like it anyway. It'll be interesting to see if they consider this to be severe or extreme. So right now, it's not a legitimate play on the ball. And they'll go over to the table and discuss it. You're seeing exactly what the officials currently seeing. Doug Shows, John Gaffney, Mike Reed, our crew tonight. Kyle Keller getting the explanation. Anytime there's a shot to the head like that, they have to go review it for an F2. Was it severe? Was it extreme? It's like they're going to leave it at an F1, and I agree with them. Yep. A couple of shots for Falls Lev in the possession. Well, for Mason Falls, Lev. Boy, Mason's had a heck of a tournament. I'll tell you what. He has just been all over the place. Quick hands, tenacity. Just love his game. Speaking of love and game, Darius Brown has decided to be uh, a little more offense-oriented from a shot perspective. Christmas curling. And a rare field goal here for Stephen F. Austin in the second half. Only the Lumberjacks fourth. Well, if they're going to get back in it, it's got to be at this end. And they're able to get a stop off the Osibor miss. Stone having trouble corralling. They turn it over for the 13th time. Falls left. Just doesn't feel like they have any answer for both Falls Lab or Osterborn. And, and Brown for that matter. Yeah, the Aggies having their way at the offensive end. Using the clock, there's another wide open look. Johnson can knock that down too, showed us last night. Kamari Wilson along with Southwick, who goes right to the cup. Delani Stone, Frank Stain, and Chris Sean Christmas for Stephen F. Austin and Kyle Keller. Stain. Oh, that would have helped. Asabor. Balls left wide open. There it is. Lead balloons to 20. Largest cushion tonight for Utah State. And timeout for Kyle Keller and Stephen F. Austin. Well, everything's working for the Aggies. Their inbounds plays, their sets, their defense has been tough. Here it is, coming right back the second time they've been able to get it back to Brown, and he's been able to make a play. Great job by the coaching staff to draw those up. And then you collapse a defense as a big guy 
the opposite side of help has to come in, kick it out to Fons Lavu. It's not going to be the MVP of this tournament, but man, oh man, has he delivered 20 point lead. I don't think anybody in the gym saw this game getting out of hand like this for either team. Yeah, and it's funny in talking to Utah State head coach Danny Sprinkle, when we talked about Paul's Lev, it was more about his defense. Said he, he thinks he could be a monster on the defensive end because he's just so tenacious, so aggressive. Didn't tell us though, he, he runs the brink and does everything else like he does. Well, what a lift from Templin. What a lift from Falls Love. He's already played 10 guys in this game. And he talked about shortening up his rotation by the time conference play came around. I, I think as a staff, if they can bring home this championship, they may have to reevaluate that strategy because these guys seem to play well in the limited minutes that they get. They're unselfish. They're not trying to hunt their own shots. And they seem to feed off of each other. And you can definitely play harder when you play more guys. And right now they're out toughing the Lumberjacks, which just rarely happens. Kajust, a lot of basketball left, but need to almost execute perfectly on most of your offensive possessions and get some stops. They tie up Martinez, arrow to them. Well, to your point on Falls, Lev, he may not be the MVP, but first night, 11 points, four assists. Second night, nine points, pair of assists, three steals. And A.J. Kajust had a, a big night the first game. Going to need a lot more from him. And then Falls left finishing the thought, 15 tonight. So he's had 35 points in three games. Been a double-figure scorer here for the Aggies since they got to Georgetown. Asabor stepped through. Outlet from Christmas. Kajust right to the basket. The type of plays that got him going the other night. Yeah, great job by Coach Keller getting the lane opened up. You see how he dragged his big man out of the picture right there, Matt. That's what Kajus needs. He needs space to operate in. Now, he didn't just have a big game the other night. He had 23 points in the second half. And so let's see if this lineup works a little better. Now, they're going to have to get stops. But at the offensive end, if he can operate in space, he's the one there's a walking bucket and can come up with those monster scoring points, those moments where you need right now because you're in big trouble in the championship game of the Cayman Islands Classic. Johnson, turn around. That won't help. Eight now for the redshirt sophomore center. Kajust. Just doesn't feel like there's enough at both ends of the floor tonight for the Jacks. Kajust fouled by Falslev. Uh, getting halfway through this second half just about. And Utah State keeps getting closer to hardware. That's going to look good in Logan if they hold on. Utah State by what's 18. Title game here at the Cayman Islands Classic. And their best player, Great Osibor, a native of England. And the man holding the clipboard, their assistant coach, Chris Haslam, the one responsible for bringing him to Montana State. 
former British national team member. And also uh, a relationship with Josh Aduje, who was a high schooler at Arizona Compass Prep, but elected to go to Coastal Carolina. And they were eventually able to bring them both to their program. And Danny Sprinkle, I'm sure grateful for Chris Haslam and the bevy of talent that he has at his disposal. Well, it's truly an international game now. And Matt, you call so many games and you get the lineups and they're just names at every level of college basketball from all over the world. And I just wonder the 1992 dream team with Larry Bird, Magic, Patrick Ewing, Michael and Scotty, and of course, Carl and John. I just, you just wonder the impact that that team had globally and all these young kids who may have been playing soccer or baseball or whatever else fell in love with the game of basketball because here we are decades later and it just seems like the whole world wants to shoot baskets. Including Carson Templin who's off the bench for Utah State. But missed that follow there. Remember that dream team run like it was yesterday. Even though one of us was only about eight or nine years old when it happened. Mm. Opened up with a blowout of Angola. Now, how do you remember that? Just because, my friend. Is that the uh, game where partially... <laughs> <laughs> goal. I mean, look, I mean, you're pulling out that kind of information. Is that the game with Barkley elbowed the, the poor young guard? I'm pretty sure it was, yes. Agbon Polo got this block. Balls left able to recover. Aggies have done just about everything right. They've been balanced, they've forced turnovers, they've shot the ball well. Balls Lab has been one of the ones who has. Templin falling down, called a timeout. Both teams still playing extremely hard, protecting the rim. How big a story is Carl Templin? I mean, he has been all over the place. Just a remarkable performance. and. Another shot at the rim, but not so fast, my friend. A couple great athletic plays at both ends, and Utah State right now, they can taste it. 10.08 to go. The clock is their friend. You can't turn the ball over, and you still have to play inside out down the stretch. Meanwhile, Stephen F. Austin just hasn't had it. For a team that's so efficient offensively, came in under 55% from the field, credit the Utah State defense, has held the Lumberjacks to 36% tonight, and only 18 from three. And again, they were at 44 from the perimeter. So final now night of the tournament, Steven, seemingly have come undone. Now Stephen F. Austin gonna allow Brown here to catch it again on this out of bounds play. Here he comes out the left side. Uh, they missed him. Brown and hits it. It's that wheel again. Second time they ran it. 11 for Darius Brown. Back to the largest lead of the game for Utah State. And look at Brown still hustling to the corner. Reminder to stay tuned after the conclusion of our game. Came in Islands Classic Awards Ceremony. Where all the hardware gets handed out. Including the MVP trophy. Christmas off the window. See if Stephen F. Austin has a last gasp up their sleeve. And 
Only the second field goal for Krishan Christmas. Balls left, says no, probably not tonight. Has matched the career high with 17. Osabor swatted it away off of Kajust. Agbon Polo. Stephen F. Austin running out of available possessions. Penetrate and kick. Miles Jenkins couldn't convert the three. And a travel here on Jaleel Bopard. Here's Christmas. I mean, so far, it's been a tough birthday, but they're just trying to find a little bit of energy, a little spark from somebody. They're going to have to hit several threes down the stretch, but the way they're defending, it just doesn't look good right now. They've got to put together some stops. There's still enough time, but not if you're giving up layups around the rim. Bodies tumbling everywhere. Finally rescued, Southwick. Can't convert. Lumberjacks all out of sorts. Falls live and Osibor. And that oh, kind of no. night for Utah State. Boy, from the free previous play, like there's sweat on the floor. And Southwick in some pain. Just remember those guys that they dove on the floor in the previous play. It's all wet. Look at that. That is so dangerous, Matt. Mm. And good to see Clayton Southwick walking off on his own power. I'll tell you, Clayton's a warrior. I mean, he plays hard. He's going to have a spectacular year. You talk about a role player, a guy who's not afraid to mix it up, set screens, do the dirty work. But that, uh, that's a tough situation there. Big time hustle play by both teams, the possession before it, but he's going for that loose ball. Well, how efficient has Utah State been tonight? 17 assists on 28 baskets. Both Brown and Falls Lev, better than five apiece. Brown with eight, Falls left six to go along with 17 points. Danny Sprinkles, guys, three straight days of leaving a lasting impression. Son of a high school coach, high school and college football coach. And watching his dad coach and even coach a little basketball, that was his first memory of the game. His first influences. free throws for Martinez. 22 point game. There's nobody on the line for those Martinez free throws. Now dead ball technical. And Utah State now up 24. Inside of eight minutes left here in the 2023 Cayman Islands Classic title game. Aggies are in the driver's seat. Tough night for Stephen F. Austin. Utah State lead. While you were away, sorting out the dead ball technical. 
It ended up going on Stephen F. Austin, head coach Kyle Keller. Not too happy with this officiated crew. And not sure if it, it was in regard to the floor or... But that was the result. Dead ball technical called on the coach. Ian Martinez with a couple of free throws. And then uh, they went to the arrow. So that was why the Lumberjacks got possession back. And a little Hail Mary. Asabor with the catch. Trying to put an exclamation point on this title night for them. 14 for Great Asabor. Yeah, how important have the out of bounds plays underneath the basket, sideline out of bounds? How important have those been for Utah State in this tournament? I mean, we can't overlook those calls. They've had several in those situations. And we were talking about the acronyms. Very good blobs and slobs for them. Yeah. And game above the rim, too. Martinez says, let's start the party a little early. Came into the championship game averaging 45 points in the paint against some South defenses. They are already up to 48 points. And I would almost guess that a Coach Keller coach team has never given up 50 points in the paint to anybody. But we talk about these slobs and blobs that Utah State's been running. Here's just another example. They get the breakaway over the top and then right now everybody's scrambling. Is that kid a magician or what? The assist, the turnover rate is off the charts. 14 assists, one turnover coming into this game. And I've got him now for 10 assists in this one, one turnover. So if my math is right, he's a 24 to two assist to turnover ratio. Matt, that's just spectacular. That's 12 to one. That's almost unsustainable. Ah. But Darius Brown, probably one of the best ball handlers in all the land. All of D1, all of, not D1, all of college basketball. Yeah, I agree. I just didn't know much about him. And we studied him on tape, and it looked like he was a more aggressive scorer. But he's been the floor general in this tournament. Kept everybody under control. And these guys just Are you kidding me? What a performance by the Aggies. Ian Martinez. A crazy three to go along with the dunk. And this has gotten way, way out of hand. Coming up on five minutes left, Matt Martucci. And the Big Ten legend just settles. And Ian Martinez. Just why not? Let's pad the stats. Lead is 30. Well, partner, favorite part of this tournament for you. Was it that opening game? The Oakland-Drake well, matchup? That seems like a long time ago. Was that uh, Drake and Oakland? <laughs> but look, even when the Lumberjacks play perfect defense, it just doesn't matter on this night. Sometimes it doesn't go your way. And Utah State from the opening tip the more aggressive team, the more physical team, and they are hitting big time shots. It's just not explainable. I don't think anybody in either program would have imagined a 30 point lead with 426 to go. It's it's hard to hard to believe. Asabor rare turnover. 
So yeah, it's Oakland to Drake. That's what I was asking you about. As that Bunkolo rattles this home. Yeah, they had a championship game feel to it. Campy, that zone defense. DeVries, the All-American. It sure got us off to a good start. And it was really fun to study the Stephen F. Austin team, Coach Keller. You know, if you cover a lot of Power 5 basketball, you just don't realize the dominance of the last 10 years of that program. All the, they're called the giant killers, all the teams that they've defeated, all the great players. It's It's been a real pleasure. And I mean, nobody knew what to expect from Utah State. 13 newcomers, no returning points, four minutes from last year's squad that went to the NCAA tournament. But very deserving of a championship. And I don't think Coach Sprinkle himself thought that they would come out in this game and play this well. And they'll have a week off. They'll go to Chaffetz Arena to take on Travis Ford and St. Louis. That'll Boy, be a, a Travis week from Ford. tonight. Travis Ford better maybe not give his guys as much time off over Thanksgiving as he was thinking before. You better be ready for these guys. Now they have a game in between. They're playing Dartmouth. Utah State all over. Stephen F. Austin here. An excited Aggie bench of 32. I have a feeling uh, the Yukon Huskies, not that this is, you know, any surprise, Jeff Settles, but, you know, LSU's the defending national champ. All that drama, the distraction of Kim Mulkey and Angel Reese, that opens it up for the Huskies to just come in and win the whole thing. Well, is that your bold prediction of the year? I haven't heard one out of you this week. Yeah, not really. And it's <laughs> it's... It's not a tournament though, so it's different format. It's just two days worth of hoops. Well, women's basketball right now, extremely popular. And obviously LSU, so many people follow those players. The coach, UConn domination for a couple decades now. And then Caitlin Clark has captured the nation's attention as well. So. It'll be a, that'll be a fun event as those teams roll in here, go to the Westin, go out to Stingray City. It's it's going to be a great trip for everybody involved. Yeah, UConn actually off of uh, what was a homecoming trip for Paige Beckers. They just went up to Minnesota where she's from, played at Williams Arena and took care of uh, go for women's basketball by 18. Well, as we wind down here, two minutes left. The great folks at KMAC Sports once again putting on a fantastic tournament. The CEO, Joe Wright, Victor O'Garo, Chief Strategy Officer, and Jill Turk and the legal counsel, Al Wilson. Now, congratulations to everybody involved. Talked about our fantastic crew earlier tonight. And Jess Settles have to tell you, this was fun. You and I never worked together, but uh, felt like we've been doing it for a while. Absolutely, Matt. W wonderful job. Incredible stories and research. I really appreciate your effort. Everybody involved. Okay. Yeah, our producers, Lucas Haskins, Cruz Sanchez, also on graphics. Our director, Tyler Larkin, cameras, Scott McAllister, along with Lisbeth Harrison, Alton Bell, Pat Cousineau, Albert Campbell, and then on audio, Freddie Tavares, replay, Roland Stam, and our production assistant, Luigi Marcial. Always find myself particularly thankful this time of year, Jess. Just uh, a couple of days before the holiday. Looking forward to food, family, and uh, plenty of good basketball. Yeah, no question. And happy Thanksgiving to you, to Lucas, to everybody involved, and especially to these two teams, Stephen F. Austin, 
Coach Keller and his guys will live to fight another day. What a wonderful program. Great group of guys. And the Cayman Islands Classics belongs to Utah State and the Aggies. No one expected this. No one expected this score in the championship game. Coaching matters. Coach Sprinkle, that 1-3-1, he ran in those timeouts against Austin, against Akron. Those, those really turned the tide of that game. His baseline out-of-bounds plays, his sideline out-of-bounds plays were huge in this game. The 10, 11 guys that he played, they all stepped up and delivered. And what about Carson Templin coming into this game and making a massive impact? And Coach Sprinkle, in just a short amount of time, has pushed all the right buttons. And this is going to be one of the best Thanksgivings of his life. Congratulations to his family. Coaching is hard on a family. And these championships are very rare. That's going to be a fun flight home with that trophy. Yeah, and we, we forgot to mention it. The end of that Southern Utah game as the ball goes out here. The opposing bus driver, I kid you not, actually backed into his car. So I don't know if he totaled it or what ended up happening, but they had to they had to basically send it somewhere. We had talked to him the, the day after it happened. He still didn't know where the car was necessarily, said, I'm going to have to have one of the assistants come pick me up. But a much better end to the week than, uh, or beginning to this week, than uh, the way last week went. Now, congratulations. Utah State, wire to wire in blowout fashion. Danny Sprinkle and the Aggies take home the Cayman Islands Classic title, 79-49 over Stephen F. Austin. Tonight at John Gray Gym. And folks in Logan have to love what they see. Aggies move to what's five and one on the year. Lumberjacks drop to four and two, but they have a lot better basketball to play and a lot more of it to play. And still feel like we'll be talking about them just settles in March. Yeah, would have never dreamed that coming in. I mean, these guys have impressed. This was a tough tournament to win. And these are the memories you talk about at your weddings. You talk about your kids, your grandkids. Remember the time we went to the Cayman Islands? Man, it was beautiful. Stingray City was awesome. The hotel was great. But winning a championship with our guys was something we'll never forget. A lifelong memory for the Aggies. What a team. What a performance. And great Osibor. Wow. Is he a force to be reckoned with? Folks that have come from low get treated to a good one. Jess and I will step aside. And uh, when we return, trophy presentation coming up. Stick with us, everybody. We'll be back uh, after the trophy presentation and awards ceremony for some final thoughts. Utah State, 79-49 over Stephen F. Austin. Champions of the Cayman Islands Classic here on Flow Hoops.